There was a wealthy merchant named Sumana who employed a laborer named Puna. Over time, Puna became a wealthy merchant himself and had a daughter named Utara. Sumana desperately wanted Utara to marry his son. Sumana said, Puna, for many years you worked for me. You became wealthy after you worked for me. Please don't forget how I took care of you. Puna, a devout Buddhist, answered, Sumana, I appreciate all that you did for me in the past, but your family holds incorrect religious beliefs. I cannot put my daughter in your household. Nevertheless, at the beginning of the rainy season, during which monks enter the rains retreats, in response to social pressure, Uttara married Sumana's son. During the rains retreats, monks are required to stay in one place. This provides a good opportunity for lay people to come pay their respects and learn the Dhamma. It is also an opportunity to make merit by observing the eight precepts. This includes no killing, no stealing, no sexual conduct, no harmful speech, no intoxication, no untimely meals, no adornments, no dancing and singing, and no plush bedding. Uttara told her husband that she usually observed the eight precepts each Buddhist day of observance, known as Uposatha Day. After moving into her husband's house, Uttara faced a few restrictions. She was not allowed to observe the Uposatha days as she had when she lived with her family. In addition, since her husband did not want to give up his right to lie with her, he would not let her take vows of temporary abstinence. For two and a half months, she was not allowed to go to the temple invite the monks for alms, or go observe the Uposatha days. With only 15 days left in the rains retreat, Uttara was upset. She feared she would lose the opportunity to be close to the Buddha and his monks and make merit. Father, why have you thrown me into such a prison? It would have been better to have sold me as a slave than to have married me into a family of unbelievers. In all the time that I've been here, I have not been able to perform a single meritorious deed. Puna was terribly upset when he read his daughter's letter. Out of compassion for his daughter, he devised a scheme to help her. Puna sent a bag with 15,000 golden coins along with a letter that read, My dear daughter, there is a high-class courtesan in our town named Sirima. She charges 1,000 golden coins for a night of pleasure. Take this money and hire her for 15 days to entertain your husband while you go out and do whatever meritorious deeds you like. When her husband saw Sirima's beauty, he immediately agreed to Uttara's proposal. All he could think was, Wow, my wife is going to allow me to spend time with another beautiful woman, and all she wants in return is to go do religious things? How lucky am I? Uttara was now free to give offerings and listen to the Dhamma as much as she wanted. All she could think was, Wow, I'm finally spending my time wisely. I'm lucky my husband accepted my proposal, or I would not have this opportunity. I'm lucky Sirima is available, and of such high quality that my husband did not even hesitate. And most of all, I am lucky that there is a Buddha and his splendid disciples that can teach me the Dhamma, and give me an opportunity to make merit and better my karma. I am so appreciative of everyone. Uttara received this opportunity only 15 days before the end of the rains retreat. 
she invited the Buddha to receive alms at her house every day, and he accepted. Uttara tried to do as much of the preparation, shopping, cooking, and cleaning herself in order to maximize the merit she would receive. She did not pay any attention to her husband and Sirima. On the next to last day of the rains retreat, Uttara was completely busy with preparations. As her husband walked by and saw her, he thought to himself, What a foolish girl. She has all this money, but does not know how to use it to have fun. Life is meant for pleasure. She does not know how to enjoy her wealth. She spends all her time fussing with that bald-headed ascetic. And with that, he smiled mockingly and walked away. Uttara saw him and thought, He is so silly. He does not know that belongings are temporary, and so is life. Living just for pleasure will only lead to an unpleasant rebirth. One should make their life filled with merit and good deeds, rather than chasing temporary pleasures. She then smiled compassionately at him. Surima, standing not too far away, saw husband and wife smiling at one another. This infuriated her. Having spent the last two weeks as mistress of the house, Sirima thought, How dare her man and that woman share a private moment together in front of her? After all these nights with me, he still considers her to be so much more important? How dare they share an intimate moment while I'm nearby? I am not second to anyone. Sirima became so jealous and angry that she ran to the kitchen where she grabbed a ladle full of boiling oil. She swiftly approached Uttara with the boiling oil. When Uttara realized what was happening, she thought, My dear friend is so angry. I owe her so much. Her virtue and value to me is immeasurable. It is because of her and her work that I am able to do what I was previously unable to do, make merit and listen to the enlightening teachings of the Buddha. She then made an aspiration of truth. If I have any anger in me, let the oil burn me. But if I hold no anger or resentment towards Sirima, may the oil not burn me. Then, she closed her eyes and awaited her fate. When the pleasure worker Sirima dumped the entire ladle on Uttara's head, the oil flowed off harmlessly as if she was washing her hair with cool water. The maids nearby saw this and shrieked in horror. They quickly ran to their mistress's aid. Sirima, seeing her plan fail, quickly went back for another ladle of oil. At this point, the maids could not take it any longer. They came together to prevent Sirima from attacking their mistress again. They caught up with Sirima and began to strike her with their hands, their feet, and even nearby objects. Seeing this, Uttara tried to stop them, but was unsuccessful. The maids, full of anger, did not heed her. Feeling compassion for Sirima, Uttara saw no other option but to throw herself over Sirima to protect her. Uttara helped Sirima get up and tended to her wounds. As she came to her senses, Sirima felt a tidal wave of shame. She suddenly remembered who she was, her profession, and her temporary role in this household. She thought, My jealousy led me to do an unforgivable thing. 
Not only did Utara endure my attack without anger, but she also took a huge risk to protect me. May my head split into seven pieces if I do not beg her for forgiveness. Sirima jumped off the stool and bowed low at the feet of Utara and begged for forgiveness. Utara said, My father is still living. If he forgives you, so will I. Sirima said, Then I will go to Puna the rich merchant and beg him for forgiveness. Utara then said, Puna is the father who brought me into this round of suffering we call life. If the father who brings me out of the round of suffering forgives you, then so will I. But who is the father who is bringing you out of the rounds of suffering? asked Sirima. The Buddha, the fully enlightened one, said Uttara. Sirima then said, I do not know him. What shall I do? He will be here tomorrow, together with his monks. Come over then and bring whatever offering you can. You can then ask for his forgiveness. Sirima gladly agreed and went home. She prepared all sorts of food and brought it to Utara's house the next day. Still ashamed of her behavior, Sirima did not dare to make any offerings herself, so Utara compassionately took care of everything. Afterwards, Sirima knelt at the Buddha's feet and begged for forgiveness. What for? he asked. Sirima confessed all her actions and intentions to the Buddha. The Buddha asked Utara to confirm what happened and what she had thought during the incident. Utara told him how she only thought thoughts of appreciation during the attack. The Buddha said, Excellent. This is the true way to overcome anger. And then he said, Overcome anger by non-anger. Conquer evil by goodness. Conquer the stingy with a gift. And the liar with truth. The Buddha then preached the Dhamma to all present and explained the Four Noble Truths. In the end, Uttara attained further enlightenment as an Anagami, a non-returner. Her husband, the non-believer, as well as his skeptical parents, became Sotapanas, stream-enterers. Sirima too became a Sotapana. What do you think the moral of this story is? We hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you did, and click subscribe if you want to see our uploads.